Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Um, I'm happy to be doing this video. This video um, is especially prepared for those of you in primary school, especially those of you in primary three, four, five, or even six, okay? This will help you prepare for your common entrance, the exam you take before going to secondary school. And with what I'm doing here, I'm going to answer a series of past questions with you and um, it's going to enable me cover so many topics at a go. Let's get started. Let's look at question number one. Question number one says, what fraction of two minutes is six seconds? Now, if you look at this question, this question has to do with fraction. And any question that has to do with fraction has two parts. We have the numerator and the denominator. For this question, the bigger one is two minutes. Of course, six seconds is smaller than two minutes. So let two minutes be the denominator. Two minutes, bring it here. And then six seconds, let it be the numerator. Six seconds, you bring it here, step one. Now that we have arranged this as a fraction, the next thing is to make sure that both of them have the same units. You know, this is seconds, this is minutes. The units are not the same. So to make sure, or to make them to have the same units, we have to convert the bigger unit to have the same value or the same unit as the smaller one. Since the smaller one is seconds, the bigger one is minute, let's do a conversion. 60 seconds will give you one minute, right? So two minutes will be how many seconds? 60 plus 60, which will give you 120 seconds. That will be equal to two minutes. So, six seconds, the numerator, divide by the denominator. Instead of having two minutes, you are going to have 120 seconds. Since 120 seconds is equal to two minutes. So, replace two minutes with 120 seconds. Now, at this point, the units are the same, second seconds. So, we have to just reduce it to the lowest term, all right? So, seconds cancel seconds. Divide both sides by six. Okay, six here, six into six is one, over six into 12 is two, bring down zero. So 120 divided by six is 20. So your answer is one over, one over 20, okay? And the option is C. Let's look at the next question. What is the volume of the box below? This is a cuboid. And the formula for calculating volume of cuboid Volume is length times breadth times height. If you, the, these parameters has been given, the, vo, the length here is this 10 centimeter. Here you have 10 centimeter times the breadth, which is this, eight centimeter times the height, which is this, five centimeter, uh, five centimeter. Now our volume will be multiply everything through. 10 times eight, we give you 80 centimeter times centimeter. We give you centimeter square times five centimeter. So volume is equal to five times zero, zero, five times eight, 40. So 80 times five is 400. Centimeter square times centimeter. We give you centimeter cube. So our answer is 400 centimeter cube, which is A. Let's look at the third question. In a certain class, the attendance of children from Monday to Friday was 43, 40, 45, 42, and 45. What was the average attendance of the class that week? Now, um, average is the same thing as mean. How do you calculate problems that has to do with average? It's very simple. Just sum the numbers together and divide by how many they are. So let's sum the numbers up. We have 43 plus 40 plus 45 plus 42 plus 45, okay? Those are the numbers given. Divide by how many are they? One, two, three, four, five. Because the numbers are five, you divide by five, okay? So let's um, add this up. 43 plus 40, quickly add them up. Okay, by the time you are done adding this up, you are going to get 215. Now divide, all this will give you 215, divide by five. 
25 divided by 5 is 4, remainder 1. Put the remainder on top of 5, that's 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3, your answer is 43. Now look at the options. We have A, 40, B, 41, C, 42, D, 43. So this is our right answer, 43. Okay, now let's go over to this other side of the board and take question number 4. Now let's look at this question. For question number 4, we have our minute and seconds, 3 hours, 15 seconds, 15 minutes, 0 seconds, subtract 1 minute, 45, 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 15 seconds. This is also easy. This has to do with subtraction. So 0 minus 15, that is not possible. So what do you do? You come over to these 15 minutes, borrow one from 15. If you remove one from 15, it won't be 15 again. This will be 14. That one you are borrowing, don't forget, is one minute. As you bring one minute to seconds, one minute is equal to 60 seconds, right? So this will give you 60. So 60 minus 15, what will it give you? 60 minus 15. Yes, what will it give you? 45. That's true. He answered correctly. 60 minus 15 will give you 45, but you forgot your unit. 45 seconds, because this is now in seconds. So this is 45 seconds, okay? Now let's look at the minute hand. This is um, 14 minutes, right? Because I remove one minute from this, okay? 14 minutes minus 45. It's not possible. Times. So what do you do? You go over to the hours and minus from it, and that will be two hours. Then you add 60. Okay, let's take it as you explained. You said we we'll have to come over to this place. We we'll remove one from here. This will be two, right? The one we are borrowing from here is one hour, right? Now, as one hour comes to this place, it's going to give us 60 minutes because one hour is 60 minutes. Thank you very much. So this 60 plus 14 will give us 74. Okay, so we can now do 74 minutes minus 45 minutes, right? So 4 minus 5 can go borrow 1 year, 6 put the 1 year, 14 minus 5, 9, 6 minus 4, 2. So this will give us 29 minutes. 2 minus 1 will give us 1 hour. So our answer is 1 hour, 29 minutes, 45 seconds, which is B. I'm sure that is understood, right? Question number five. Question number five reads, in a class of 32 boys, 16 passed the examination and four were absent. The rest failed. What fraction of the whole class failed? This kind of question, how do you think, or what do you think we should do? I think we should subtract the number of people that passed and the number of people that were absent in that examination from the total number of boys in that class. Therefore, we're going to do 16 plus 4, which is 20, and subtract it from the number of people in that class, which is 32, giving us 12. Then we're going to do 12 over the number of people in the class, which is 32, and give it into the lowest terms, which is 3 over Beautiful. Well, you've heard it from her. She said at the end of solving this question that her answer will be 3 over 8. She solved this without using pen or paper. Well, we are going to solve this together. Let's find out if she's correct. Now, to solve this, let's start. The total number of boys in a class um, is a class of 32 boys. Right? And then the total number of uh, boys that didn't fail, we said 16 passed the exam plus 4 that we are not in school. All right? So 20 boys did not fail. Now, those that failed the exam will be total number of boys in the class 32 minus those that did not fail, which will give us 12. They now said, what fraction of the whole class failed? 12 that failed over how many are there in the class? 32. Divide both sides by, okay, let's start with 2, which will give us 6 over 32 divided by 2. 16. 16, that's correct. Also divide further by 2. This will give you 3 over 8. So you can see that she is correct. So well done, well done. Let's go over to question number 6. Question number 6 reads, a certain number is multiplied by 5 
and then 13 is added. The result is 48. What is the number? Let's interpret this question together. A certain number. In this question, was the number given? No. The number wasn't given. So, my young friend, since the number was not given, what do you think we should do? I think we should represent the number as x. Okay. She said we should represent the number as x. All right. Do you know what it simply means? Whenever numbers are not given, okay, we have to use any alphabet of our choice. He picked X. You can decide to use A, B, or even C to represent the number that wasn't given. But since he has said we should represent the number as X, right? So let the number be X. It's multiplied by 5. X times 5, which will give us 5X, right? And then 13 is added. You have 5x plus 13. The result will be what? 48. 48. Okay, at this point, we have a simple equation, right? To solve this, we call it like times. This plus 13, move it over here to meet his brother here. So as plus 13 crosses the equals to sign, the plus will change to minus. Here we have 5x is equals to 48 minus 13, okay? So if 5x is equals to 48 minus 13, so um, let's just do it here, 48 minus 13. 8 minus 3 will give us 5, 4 minus 1 will give us 3, okay? So 5x is equals to 35. To get x, you divide both sides by 5, okay? So divide this side by 5, divide this side by 5, 5 cancel 5, 5 into 35 is 7, x is equal to 7. So the number is 7, which is E. Easy, right? Okay, let's look at question number 7. What is the volume of a cylindrical tank? Do you know the meaning of cylinder? Yes, let me draw a cylinder for you to see. Cylinder is, looks like this. Okay, what is the volume of a cylindrical tank whose base area is 27 meters square and depth is 12 meters? The first thing I want you to learn, um, I want you to learn the formula for calculating volume of a cylinder. Okay, now we can solve that in two ways. Volume of a cylinder is on pi radius square h or Volume is equal to what? Base area times height. So it all depends on the question. All right. So if base area has been given in the question, you don't need to use this formula. Just multiply the base area by the height. Okay. Now, if you look at this question, what is the volume of a cylindrical tank whose base area, consider the base area has been given as 27 meters squared. So we don't need this formula. Now, we go over here. Since the base area is 27, volume will be 27 times the height. The depth is same thing as the height, okay? Which is 12 meters. So you multiply by 12. So 27 times 12. 2 times 7, 14, carry 4 carry 1, 2 times 2, 4 plus 1, 5, 1 times 7, 7, 1 times 2, 2, so we have 4, 7 plus 5 is 12, 2 carry 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3, 2, 4 meter cube, okay, that's our answer, 3, 2, 4 meter cube, and the right answer is A, all right, let's look at question number 8, how long will a man take to cover a distance of seven kilometers by walking four kilometers per hour. Interestingly, this man walks four kilometer per hour as given in the question, and one hour is 60 minutes. So we can say that this man walk, he walks four kilometer in 60 minutes, right? So let's find out how long it will take him to walk um, one kilometer. If four kilometer is equal to 60 minutes, which is same thing as one hour, 
one kilometer we give us 60 divided by 4 60 divided by 4 what would the answer be? 15 that's correct one kilometer we take in 15 minutes now when it's less you divide when it's more you multiply now how long will a man take to cover a distance of seven kilometers? Of course, seven kilometers is more than one kilometer. So you just multiply 15 by seven. Seven times five, 35. Five carry three. Seven times one, seven plus three, 10. 105 meters to cover seven kilometers. Now, we have to convert 105 meters to hour and minute, all right? So how many? hours or hour can you remove from 105 minutes if 60 minutes make one hour 120 minutes two hours right we cannot remove two hours from here because this is not up to 120 but we can remove one hour from here that's like removing 60 minutes and we'll be left with 55 for, sorry 45 minutes thank you 45 minutes so the answer will be one hour 45 minutes look at the option one hour for five minutes the right answer the question number nine a plane takes off from lagos at 10 30 a.m it flies to accra in 65 minutes makes a stop of 40 minutes at accra airport and then flies back to lagos in 70 minutes at what time does it land again at lagos airport let's break this down a plane takes off from Lagos at what time? Okay, let's say from Lagos at 10.30 a.m. Right? Now, this plane flies to Accra in 65 minutes. That means from Lagos to Accra took the plane 65 minutes. Okay? The plane makes a stop of 40 minutes plus the 40 minutes stop and then flies back to Lagos in 70 minutes. So the total time it took the plane to fly from Lagos to Ghana and then to return back to Lagos is this, once you add them up. So let's add them up. Don't forget this is 70 minutes, okay? So 65 plus 40 minutes will give us 105, okay? So 105 minutes plus 70 minutes will give us 175 minutes. Here comes the question. Express, if you express 175 minutes in hours and minutes, what will it give you? How many hours can we extract from 175 minutes? We can extract two hours because two hours is 120 minutes. Maybe 55 minutes as to Beautiful. Thank you very much for that intelligent response. You heard that we can remove, we can extract two hours from here. Since 60 minutes we give us one hour, two hours we give us 120 minutes. And she said we can be able to get three hours from this because it's now up to 180 minutes. Three hours at 62 this we give you 180 minutes so you can only remove if you remove two hours from this that means you are removing 120 minutes i've removed two hours then i'll be left with what 55 minutes so 55 minutes it simply means that 175 minutes is equals to two hours 55 minutes is equals to this this and this they are the same thing now Remember, the question says, at what time does it land again at Lagos Airport? So to find the time it lands again at Lagos Airport, we have to do 10.30 when it took off, plus the time it took the plane to go and return back, which is um, 2 hours, 55 minutes. Add 2 hours to this and 55 minutes to this. It's 2 hours, 55 minutes, right? So. 5 plus 0 is 5, 5 plus 3 is um, 8, right? 2 plus 0 is 2, 1 plus, then bring down this one, 
you have 1285. We can not leave answer this way. We have 85 minutes here, right? So we can still remove one hour from this, okay? If you remove one hour, which is 60 minutes, is one hour from this, we'll be left with, remove 60 minutes from here, we'll be left with 25 minutes. So bring the one here, 12 plus one is 13. And of course, you know 13, after 12 is 13, 13 means one. So this same thing as 1.25 p.m. Okay, so our right answer is 1.25 p.m., which is D. All right, let's take our final question for today. Jones, Ito, and Epo shared a number of mangoes. Jones had one over five of them, and Ito two over three. What fraction of them did Epo get? The fraction Epo took was not given, okay? But Jones was given. So Jones had one over five plus Ito was given as two over three. So let the total mango be one. So inside this one, we have Jones share, Ito and Epo share. But this two is for Jones and Ito. To get Epo share, add these two and subtract your answer from one, okay? So one minus LCM of five and three, what will they give you? 15, that's true. So LCM of five and three is 15. Now, this is five. 15 divided by five is three, three times one is three, plus 15 divided by three is five, five times two is 10. Right? So we have 1 minus 3 plus 10, 13 over 15. The same thing as over 1. So here the LCM of 1 and 15 is 15. 1 into 15 is 15. 15 times 1 is 15. Minus 15 divided by 15 is 1. 1 times 13 is 13. And your answer will be 2 over 15. 2 over 15. So our right answer is C. 2 over 15. All right, the reason why I just have to look at past questions and solve them for you is to enable us to cover a lot of topics at a go. We are not going to stop here, like I said, it's in series, so I'm going to see, um, come up with more past questions and then I'll solve them with you. So I want you to practice this.